Hi there. In this lecture, we'll talk about the laws of operations of the sets. There are basically three major laws. First is the commutative law, the other is associative law, and the third one is distributive law. One by one, we'll talk about these laws. The first one is the commutative law that states that order does not matter when it comes to the union as well as intersection. This law holds true for both of the operations. Firstly, talk about union. If we take the union of A and B, and if we calculate it for B and A, the order is reversed, but the answer will be the same. And it does make sense because A and B, if they are here in this uh, numerical example, we are going to write the elements once, no matter they appear twice or once only. Also, we will try to write them in a certain order, which is usually ascending order. So you can see that ascending order and writing the elements once only makes it the same no matter you do it for a and b and b and a respectively so this is how the union um, is holding true with the commutative law when it comes to intersection we can repeat the same exercise however in this case we will write the common elements and common elements are the same no matter we compare a with b or b with a and also their order is ascending so consequently the answer is the same for both of them so this was the first law which was commutative law now we have associative law and in this what we say is that order of selection does not matter while dealing with more than two sets here order of selection is again there but the number of sets has increased from two to three in this case we are interacting b and c these two sets and in this case we are interacting a and b that is the first two sets and then we are using it with the third one here after we interact these two sets, we interact it with the first one. So you see the order is uh, uh, not significant because uh, we are doing intersection and union. Here let's talk about union first. Uh, here there are three sets as you can see A, B and C. This is the right hand side and uh, from the right hand side we are solving this term first and we can do this easily by taking the union and then we are interacting it with C so after interacting it with c we will get this answer so we can note it and we can compare it with the value of the left hand side here you can see for the left hand side we need b u c b u c is calculated here and this is the answer of b u c and then we interact it with a so that can be done simply by introducing a in this equation and the answer would be this and we can see that this answer and this answer both of them they are the same so the left hand side is equal to right hand side so this law is also verified for union we can do it for intersection as well that is the associative law uh, let us see this time we have the left hand side and uh, this is requiring the intersection of b and c then we interact with a so b intersection c is an empty set and then a intersection this term that is b union uh, intersection c is also an empty set for right hand side we can take the intersection of a and b which is equal to this and then the intersection of this term with uh, this answer with c and that is also equal to empty set so left hand side is equal to right hand side now we come to the final and the third law which is going to be experimented with union and intersection again uh, so in this uh, case what we do is that we interact second and the third um, sets uh, primarily and we take the intersection of those and then we introduce a with a union sign and that union sign will be distributed over b and c and the next uh, or on the right hand side you can see that a is distributed over b and c so simply it's like a multiplication that we do in algebra that when a is multiplied with bracket b plus c and uh, the answer is a into b plus a into c so it is quite similar to that algebraic situation so here I have just uh, rewritten it in, in a way which will help you to understand with the help of this similarity between the algebraic process and this set notation. So following this situation we have to find the B intersection C first and this is an empty set. Then we have uh, the union of it with A. So when we do this the answer will be equal to A. So we note this answer and we try to calculate the right hand side for which we need A union B and A union C. A union B is found here and this is A union C and then their intersection is to be taken so we have taken this intersection as well this is the response of this intersection now we compare the left hand side with the right hand side and they are equal 
So now we can do the distributive law with the help of intersection. So you can see that intersection will be distributed over A uh, and B and A and C. Again, you can see that it is simply like uh, a, s a distributive law in algebra. Uh, A and B and C, these are the same three sets. Now we find out the value of B union C here first, which is equal to this set. And now afterwards, we have A intersection with this answer and the intersection of this answer with A will give us this. This was the left hand side. Now we find the right hand side for which we want to calculate the intersection of A and B and A and C and then we take the union of the two the answer will be this so we can compare it with the left hand side and we can see that it is giving us the same answer so this uh, proves the distributive law of intersection of union and associative law of intersection and associative law of union and cumulative law for intersection and cumulative law for union so this is how we can understand the various laws of set operations that we can use in mathematics as well as mathematical economics. Thank you.